Today I'm using my desktop CNC machine to build this candle display. There's absolutely nothing complicated about this project, and the best part is that I'm able to batch out seven products all at once from one piece of wood. In order to make things a little bit more efficient, I'll use my table saw and miter saw to break down the pieces, which not only saves me time, but also increases my profits. I sell these between $15 and $20, but that totally depends on where you live and how you market them. And as always, if you do decide you want to build this, I sell the SVG files, which are linked down below in the video description. Anyway, let's just jump right into it. The wood I'm using for this project is premium pine 3 quarter inch 1x12 that I purchased from my local Lowe's, but after filming this video, I did end up making 21 more of these candle displays using just regular pine 1x12s, which is a whole lot cheaper. So keep that in mind as I work through this project. You can use a little bit crappier wood uh, if you want to. I want this to be a rustic looking display, so once I had my rectangle cut out, I did think it looked too nice, uh, which means, well, I gotta beat it up with a hammer. I did use some other methods like scratching this with a rasp and slapping it with a bag of screws. Uh, I think it comes down to personal preference, just make it look, well, beat up. Once you're satisfied with some kind of rustic aesthetic, we can now clamp our workpiece down to the CNC machine to make sure it's secure. And now we can get started on assigning toolpaths on the computer, uh, which is probably what you're all here to see. I like to use Carbide Create Pro, but any CNC program that you normally use will work for this project. You just need to assign pocket toolpaths and different types of contour toolpaths. Using a quarter inch down cut bit, I'm gonna start by pocketing out the circles for the candles at 0.5 inch depth, and then move on to the rectangles for the houses, and that will be carved at 0.25 inch depth. Once those are finished, we can move on to pocketing out our doors and windows using the same bit, but this time we're gonna cut all the way through our material. After a tool change down to an eighth inch down cut bit, I'm gonna move back to the rectangles that hold the houses and pocket out dog bones in the corner using a rest machining toolpath. Because CNC machines can't carve square inside corners, these dog bones help fit our square houses into these rectangles once everything is carved. Up next, the very last pocket we need to do is for the stars, which just like the doors and windows, gets carved all the way through our material. With our pockets finished, we can move on to a no offset contour toolpath, which will mark the boundaries of our pieces so we can cut them on the table saw and miter saw later on. And last but not least, we need to select our house rooftops and use inside and outside contour toolpaths to carve all the way through the material. Just make sure that the bit is carving on the outside of the houses once you select your vectors. That's really all there is to it when it comes to assigning toolpaths. I know I went over that pretty quickly, uh, so if you do want to see more details, just check out the link below uh, and you can download the instruction manual for free. I break everything down in there step by step, uh, including how to cut down the wood using the table saw and miter saw, uh, which we'll do right now. Once I have my three strips cut, I do use a multi-tool to break away the tabs that hold our rooftops together before I move over to the miter saw and follow our carve lines to break apart the rest of the pieces. Because of the way these are arranged on the piece of wood, you will have three pieces left over that do need to be cut on the table saw to finish everything out. With the cutting finally done, we can now start to assemble these and see what they're going to look like once they're finished. Uh, once you know that they fit and you don't need to make any adjustments, now you can move on to sanding and finishing. To remove the tabs from our rooftops, I like to use my spindle sander, but you could use a flush trim router bit or even hand sand if you wanted to. I also suggest that you use a sander to round over all of the edges because if you don't do that, the sharp edges will make this piece look new and not rustic, which we wanted from the start. And just to make sure that we fix this problem, I do kind of attack these things a little bit more. Once you're satisfied with how they look, make sure to blow off all the dust so we can get started on the last and probably most annoying step of this project, uh, applying wood stain. Using a foam brush to get the majority of the base and sides of the houses, I uh, kind of rush through this just to make sure that everything is covered, and then come back with a paper towel to clean it up. When it comes to getting the inside of the doors, stars, and window, I do suggest that you come back with a small paintbrush and go that way. Uh, this does take a long time, which is why it's annoying, uh, but it's okay to be sloppy. After about 15 to 20 minutes, this is what I'm left with, and now I just leave these overnight to make sure they're dry. 
I'm choosing not to add any type of varnish onto these just to keep things simple. So once these are dry, I'm totally done with this project and I can start putting them together uh, and add our tea lights. Now all that's left to do is try to go sell these and make a few bucks. Good luck.